time when I was at school and they had me the um the year ed when I was in the fourth year. The year ed had me about not coming home so much, so much I hadn't done. Mm. Like I'm not coming to school as well. And that's he took me into his office. Don't tell us a story. Let's do it. <coughs> Harps, you be Chris. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And you do to Harper. Yeah. That's Chris, that's you. Yeah. You do to him what this guy did to you. Do the past. You yes. I, I want to see this guy and I want to see exactly what it was he did to you. Okay? To come across. Okay. Well, Chris. Well, you've uh, been bad again, are you? I haven't done anything. It's always me who gets the blame for everything, innit? It's probably because it's your master the time. It's why. Well, it's not. It's not me this time. I haven't done anything. Build yourself up a bit more, Chris. Stop losing your temper. Yeah. Be angry. Be angry, like right? Don't take no cheek off. You're in charge. Of You're a teacher. He's, he's a boy. He's, he's, he's a coming out as more teacher. powerful than you. Yeah. You've got to show that you're more powerful and dominant than he yeah. is. Do you want to have to strap you now? You ain't touch your moves, right? Oh, we'll see about that, won't we? No, we will. Stand up. Me? me. Stand up. Look at my jumper. Now, stand up. Look at my jumper. Look, Chris, don't be awkward. Will you piss me off, you do? Well, he wouldn't smile, would he? No. 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 Look, sit down in the chair. I'm the headmaster, right? Yeah. Now, you tell me all the things you wanted to say about school and all the things you said, want to say about me, OK? Yeah. I'm the headmaster. Go on, go for it, then. Bastard. Well, yeah, but that's... I mean, I'll tell you. Explain. Say. You just, you just think you know everything about me when you do. Our theatre group's called Young Foundry. It's based at Theatre Foundry in Darleston. We've already done one show called Paint Your Bedroom Black, which we toured throughout the West Midlands. We're now holding auditions for our second show, which should start touring in about a month. Do you live at home? Yeah. Right. What does your... What does your dad do for a living? He's not working at the moment. He's out of the lab. Do you live with your parents? Yeah. And um, what's your dad do for a living? He's a policeman. Let's set up a family situation, like something that we all know, round, let's say, round the meal table. Well, I found school was pretty pointless. Um, they said go to school, pass all your exams, and when you leave, you'll have a job. Right, I went to school, worked hard, passed all my exams. I got English, maths, computers, metal work, history, geography. But they, they've done me now good. I'll sign on every two weeks, get my down money. But I mean, that's like gone in two days. And so you just spend the other 12 waiting to sign on again. It's really a bit of a pointless way to leave. Well, there's now a real possibility of work. There's always possibility of being thrown onto another scheme. There's always been thrown onto, like, the job training scheme or the community programme. I mean, what I want's a full-time job. My first six months on the YTS were spent in a training kitchen and the second six months were spent in an actual working kitchen. And I was expecting to start a full-time job when the course finished. How's it going, Jim? I think it's all right. I think it needs a bit more seasoning now. Now that should do it. Can you have a word in the storeroom, man? Yeah, I'll be in a minute. Coming in, Jim. I've been looking at your records and you ain't got long left now, have you? Nah, about three weeks. Well, I, I wanted to ask you, have you got anything planned for when you finish this game? You said if I went to college, passed me exams and did well at work, I'd, you'd keep me on at the end? Yeah. I know we said that, Jim, but we've done all we can, really, with you now on, on the scheme as it is. Um, you know all the job. We can't lane you anymore as it is. Um, I, I, we feel now that it's up to you um, to go out, get yourself a job and set yourself up, you know. Well, I ain't staying here to finish the scheme. I'm oh. going back to the training centre. I th I, well, I'm, I'm sorry, but um, I think you ought to stay and uh, just finish the, the course. You've only got three weeks to go. And if, if you want a reference of us, um, it's going to look bad on that, isn't it? I and, don't um, want a reference. I want a job. 
Well, I'm sorry, mate. There's nothing I can do. Well, I ain't staying here. Well, I'm sorry. Well, that's it then, eh? What did he say, then? You give me the push. After this game, I'm finished. What? I thought they were keeping you on here. So did I. They'll probably do the same for you. Oh, that ain't fair. What are you going to do now? I'm going back to the training centre. The old Teddy. See you, lad. I like to write about things I've seen, places I've been, people I've known. I like to, to get all those things into one room to set it in a play. Things are like an experience and other people's experiences because you find that you can use them in writing so many times. I like building characters out of nothing. They're just people with names to start off with. But when you've seen it performed, then these people are actually real. You see them on stage, they're actual people, instead of just cardboard cutouts with names. This is John. That's good. I like that. Can we do a play again? But can you just... Don't worry about the next layer that I know you can all do, because when we go to the gym, that's going to happen anyway. Do it without the projection. Just... Well, Jimmy wrote the play. But it's about harmlessness. People who live in an all-night calf and it, it tells of some of the reasons for people being homeless Ready? some of the things they do while they're homeless to get money lights up where is it well most of the people in the play are young homeless people because it's harder for people who are young single who have been kicked out of home for one reason or another to find somewhere to live Quite a big majority of young people who are homeless. There's a family problem that puts them there. But if it is, you can always come and share mine. We well, won't get served like that, will you? Hey! Hey, you! Come on, love, you're now the rules. What is it? You're now the rules, now sleeping. I wasn't sleeping, I was just resting my eyes. Come on, get out. Leave her alone, she ain't doing any harm. She's been in here for four hours now. She's only had one cup of tea. This is a restaurant, not a doss house. Now either she buys something or she's out. Um, listen, mm -hmm. it's a very real problem. I mean, in Birmingham, there are people living in cardboard boxes. Mm -hmm. uh, there are people living in all-night cafes. There are people living in places like the Boot Centre, Trinity Centre. Um, there are people sl sleeping rough. It's another problem similar to glue sniffing because you can't see it. You think it's not there, mm. but the problem's very real and it, it is there. <laughs> oh, oh, what we done here? Glue back. Oh, dear, dear. Yeah, man, it's a Went to the boot shelter in Birmingham <laughs> and spent an evening there talking to some of the people who were living there. Picked up quite a few stories on things that had happened to them and incorporated some of them into the play. Depending on uh, your status. Yeah. If you're on supplementary benefit, then the DHS will take care of that side of things. And if you've got a job, you're to uh, Not necessarily. It depends on how high your income is. Yeah, it's a bit run down here. Yeah. It's a bit grotty. Yeah. yeah. What sort of reasons do people come here? You know, various uh, marital, marital breakdowns, mm. parental feuds. Family feuds, yeah. debt. Yeah. Could be anything. What's the main reason for somebody being harmless to come to a place like this? There this? is no main reason. No, it's just it's various. Various. You know, GPZ? Yeah. It's there. 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 It's
I'm going to try and fight for my kids. That's yeah. what they call me. Yeah. I'm going to try and fight for them. If I get them to bed, it's no good to me. I'll need a flat. Yeah. How many kids you got? Two. Two kids. Two last. What's your girlfriend's up there as well? Yeah, she went with another bloke, like, you know. Yeah. She just left me. I come home one so night from my work and everyone was gone. So what happened to you? Why, why did you come down from Scotland then? Did you have any trouble up there or did you, you know? No, you... no, neither. Just looking for a job. Yeah. Sick of being out of work. So you've, so took, down here. you've took the advice to get on your bike and find work and you've been all across the country and you still can't find yeah. anything sort of permanent. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was up in Barnsley and Sheffield and that and there was nothing <coughs> permanent up there either. Yeah. Just bits here and there. Yeah. Spend all your time on the road. Most of it. I only come to Brum to sign up. What made you want to live like that? This and that, you know. Must have been something. I mean, to make you want to live like this. Well, mainly I wanted to find work. And you start to enjoy it, moving from place to place. And when work runs out in one place, I move to another. That's a life for me, that is. It ain't easy. Why is that? Well, it's hard going. You get knackered after an hard day's ride. You get hassled by the pigs every day. When you get to a town, there's no show place to stop. The director's Simon Lanzen, yeah. who's basically an old <laughs> kid. <laughs> no, he's, he's great. Yeah. It's the best thing that ever happened to this group was meeting Simon Lanzen. Anyway, when I stopped at this night shelter in London, took my clothes off, went to bed, and when I woke up in the morning, there was this bloke walking about, you know? No. It's the truth, honestly. What? Sometimes it's so hard to work with because he's such a perfectionist and he pushes you. To Come close to hitting him sometimes. But uh, I think without time, and we want to come as far as we have now, we'd have probably just got your usual, you know, arty farty youth leader and it would have been the end, like. <laughs> so I moved into a squat with some bikers. Saved up, bought myself a bike, and moved in with them, stayed there for a couple of months. Actually, the reason why. Poor girl isn't... No, you're giving her different cues every time, Steve. It's, I bought a bike and stayed with them for a few months. She can then time her <coughs> response. Well, that's, I says a couple of months. Yeah, exactly, I'm saying, you can't, an actor, when you, you find that, when you go, if you do work in the theatre, which is, so, so, or whatever, if someone writes a script, you make a yeah, decision. Yeah, about that. But I say, she didn't even come in on the last slide. It anyway. can throw, one oh, word, one thought. wrong word can throw it. Oh, because an actor has what to... What do you mean? Well, you, you're, the line's different every time. You, get, you, you always get through that speech, but it's never exactly the same. You also missed a very nice... Um... It was just totally different from anybody I'd ever met. Yeah. I've never met anybody who's got, you know, with such imagination and creative f thoughts, morals, where he stands for. He was the first person I'd met, really, that wants so much of a generation gap. He's, uh, he's still on our level, he's, 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 re he's retained his youth. OK. <laughs> What's the joke? <laughs> what have I got on my ass? <laughs> Thanks very much. Very good day's work.